radio how it's supposed to be heard. It's the Baker Boys Show. What's going on? This is Drip and Rizzy. Every f- day. And we got a special guest in the house. It's the Baker Boys 55 after the hour on this funky Friday. We're going to welcome him the way we do. Hey, huh? Well, it's the Baker, baby. It's the Bay Baker Boys everywhere now. Everywhere. It's the Bay Baker Boys. And we got a special guest for you. Deshaun Goldston, hey, how you feeling, brother? I'm feeling good about this show. We're feeling good, brother. That's solid. We're feeling good. So we we met you at the Unbanned Air Jordan One. The story of the Unbanned, you know, the sneaker that right. may have never been, but it ended up being. Right. right. So we met you there, and it was like, yo, this this guy's pretty cool. We got to bring him in. Man, I appreciate it, man. I'm glad I'm here. Yeah, man, for I sure. Felt the energy, man, on the carpet. Man. I it. <laughs> yes, it was beautiful, man. So thank you for coming in this morning. Uh, we have a lot of things going on. Obviously, your NFL career. Uh, do you miss being on the field? What's going on? Are you training? Are you constantly training? Because you know, if you want to still be in it, you got to be right. like really go hard, right? As far as the training part, man, yeah, I mean, I do a little bit here and there. I'm not as active as I was mm-hmm. um, my first and second year out, man. Um, and I do miss it. To be honest with you, I do miss it sometimes, especially when I watch it, man, live. Yeah. Man, I've been to a couple of the Raiders, I mean, I'm sorry, Ram games. Uh, a couple of my boys play over there. So, man, I got a chance to check them out live. That was actually one of my first games. Uh, not playing. Not playing, yeah, for real? Being in that stadium. Well, what, are some, guys play, man. Me, what are some of those emotions that you went through while you were there? And, you know, this is total candor. We're open. You know what I mean? Just wanna, I want to keep it 100. I'm not a big, huge sports fan, but I know uh, someone as a professional that is not able to get in front of the microphone or touch the turntables on my end. Right. It's like, it's, that's a, it's hard. It's hard because we've done this all of our life. So from your aspect, from your point of view. Yeah, I definitely struggled my first year. Um, I, I was a, I'm was i a man of structure. You know, I'm used to waking up in the morning, going to work, doing this, and being meetings. You know, working out, going to football field, right? Going home, but that first year I, I struggled a little bit. So I, mean, I used to get dressed early in the morning, or I work out, come back home, get dressed. I'm out like noon, to, like, like about noon, yeah. And I'm just in the streets doing nothing. We got a question uh, from Twitch right now. They said, "What is the hardest part about being an NFL player?" Um, the hardest part is trying to stay level headed and, and stay consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, the NFL actually, you know, everybody says stands not for long, and that that really is true. It's true. It's really true, man. If you don't stay on top of your game, and you got young cats coming in every year, mm-hmm. um, trying to take your spot for sure, and, and, and you just got to make sure you stay healthy. That's the, that's one of the biggest things, man. And mentally best, and physically, especially mentally. I mean, one of the biggest, the best advice I got coming in was, don't do what the veterans do. Mm. Don't do what the veterans do And it made a lot of sense when, At first I was like What you mean And, and then it, it started clicking When I got in that locker room I, I just started seeing like Everybody start Talking about cars Jewelry What they gonna uh-huh. do You know you a rookie You coming in On X amount of dollars You ain't got You can't get in those conversations yeah. right. You know what I'm saying right, You right. can't hang out And go to the club The night before a practice Like some of those cats They know how to handle That kind of stuff okay. As a rookie as a, you know, as a young player You can't go out And hang out in the streets And be up late and not getting that playbook. Cause that playbook, man, that's, that's serious. That playbook is long, especially on the offensive side. If you don't know what you're doing, it ain't gonna put you out. Man, have you seen that happen before to uh, you know players? Big time. We got this. Uh, they call the guy the, uh, the Reaper. The Reaper. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the Reaper? <laughs> they have every team had this one guy that come down there that that, that grabs players. Okay. Grab your playbook, man. When you come down, when you see that Reaper come downstairs in that locker room, hope it ain't for you. And he's standing by your locker in the morning before Ooh, you get to work. Damn, before anybody like, get there, is exactly. Like, he's just it, standing there waiting. It, as soon as you get there, grab your playbook. Man. Is that the help for to, so so you won't be embarrassed? Uh, you know, to make sure he nobody sees. What, everybody's gonna know he's not here. But where's the go? Where's the go? Exactly. They're all gonna know. Some of them don't care, man. Shit, they'll just be like, hey, man. Let's go. You done. Right. You know, it, it's it's hard. It's hard. You played in two Super Bowls, correct? Correct. How was that experience playing in two Super Bowls? First of all, making it to Super Bowl is so hard. People don't understand, you know, they're like the NFL, it's only 16 games, but right. you know, the wear and tear on your body weekly is is incredible, obviously. Sure. Getting hit, you basically like running into cars on, on the on the field. Basically. Moving cars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Crash um, dummies out there. Making it to the Super Bowl two times, you know, and obviously, you know, it wasn't the outcome you wanted both times. All right. How was that experience for you? Man, it's no it's no uh, there's no adrenaline in like uh, being on the Super Bowl, being being in the Super Bowl. Yeah, like just leaving, just coming out, even coming out for warm ups. Mm-hmm. Even even the, the 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 media and all the hype surrounding the Super Bowl that week. And that's why a lot of guys, that's why they, a lot of, that's why they make you go out there like even a week before, mm-hmm. 
Just so you can settle in. Exactly, man. Because it's so much. You got to wake up. You got interviews all week. On top um, of you top of practice, playing the you game, got you got a game coming up. You, you got family anxiety. trying to get in there. Right. The, the family wants to be there. You want to make sure they're taken care of in the hotel. Make sure their their tickets are taken. All exactly, this stuff man. you're dealing with. Exactly. As you go into Super Bowl, you don't want to be thinking about this. Nah. You want to go into a game with a clear conscience, man, and, and focus on what you got to do. Definitely. Uh, I got a question about uh, the whole Super Bowl situation. Who turned the lights off? I think Vegas did that, man. Vegas did it. It was Vegas, it was Vegas, <laughs> Vegas bookmakers. Huh? I think Vegas did that, man. It was crazy because that's the second time it happened to us. It happened to me when I was in San Francisco on a Monday night playing against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh. We in Candlestick, and the lights just went completely black. They, like, forgot, to pay the bill. they forgot to pay the bill, maybe? Yeah, somebody. I don't know what was going on. Oh, but it was man. in the tailgating doing something. All right. <laughs> uh, let's get into the cigar stuff, man. The cigar shop. What, right. what drove you to become a cigar? I wanted to do a high-end cigar shops like what what drove you into that man, it started back in what 2000 i'll say seven like my rookie year man i went out to vegas one uh super bowl year not super bowl not super bowl new year's actually and mm -hmm. then um we in the club man and, and a bunch of baseball players were in there a bunch of place baseball players going around smoking cigars they passing on cigars so we got to having the conversation because at a table right in front of us and we just got to talking and you know smoking cigars celebrating having a good time man i just got into it and then my boy uh, that i played with i ended up getting drafted and one of my um, good friends moran norris um he was a big cigar smoker i got an old soul man so i always hung out with cats older than me uh -huh. some of my good friends are like 50 something okay man, you know so i used to always hang out with them at the cigar lounge he has a cigar lounge right here on uh sunset right across where the uh house of blues used to be right okay next door yeah there, yeah man and that was that was our kicking spot I, I fell in love with him I, i'm I play football, so I'm used to like the, uh, the the whole aspect of camaraderie, just hanging out and guys just talking and networking, and, and I just fell in love with it, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a good question right here from uh, one of our Twitch mobbers. He said, can you ask him if there's uh, the gap has closed between Cuban cigars and Honduran and Dominican quality-wise? Has the gap closed? Yeah. You know what? Um, it, it has a little bit, man. I think... Um, for the simple fact, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a good, uh, I'm a big Cuban smoker. Yeah, I'm a Cuban cigar smoker. Man. I like the Cohibas, man. Um, but uh, to answer that question, there's a lot of that's on the market now that you can that that blends well with that are comparable. Cuban. Exactly. Oh, okay. All right. Exactly, man. So for somebody who's not a cigar smoker, for instance, that we've never, I think I might have been given a cigar here or two, but what is uh, the filling? What, you know, describe it. Is it, is it, is it a high? Is it a, a taste? Nah, it's more of a taste, man. Okay. It's soothing. You okay. know, it, it's not a high. It's a nice little buzz, especially okay. when you get you a nice little, uh, little, little cup of whiskey. Yeah, the cognac, cognac to go wrong with it. it. Just sit back and just chill. So it, take me down, like, for instance, how do we do this? Like, if you know, what is a, for a beginner? What do we do? <laughs> if I wanted to, to begin. How would you suggest a beginner starts to to mess around with cigars? What's the training wheels, if you will? Man, it's really not that much, man. It's just you can't inhale. Okay, there yeah, it is. That's, that's what I want. I got a lot of friends and stuff that are you know other smokers. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they, they, when they get on the cigars, they inhale. Them. Right. It'll make you throw up. You <laughs> choke. You will definitely throw up. Okay. So you gotta, you know, you can't. Inhale them. Some people inhale. If you are advanced, if you're advanced, in uh, advanced, then, then that's you can some of them. Okay. If you just tuned in, we have Deshaun Golson in here. He's talking about his cigar. Uh, it's called Smoke, smoke Kings. Kings. Yeah, smoke right, Kings, baby. Smoke yeah. Kings. How many you got? Get you got one. You got two. Um, I got one Smoke Kings. I Where's it at? Smoke Kings. It's out here in the, um, it's like Ladera Heights. Okay. Yeah. Right in the plaza. You know, man, Johnson Friday used to yeah, be yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, man. It's right, like, right in that plaza. Is there, awesome. is there any special, I know you're a big music fan. Is there any special music that you like to listen to when you smoke cigars? <sighs> it, I'm, I'm a Virgo, man, so I'm moody. It depends, man. <laughs> I, I'm, I like uh, soothing me. Sometimes I go old school. Sometimes I do, you know, just some soft uh, hip hop or some old school rap. Uh, soft, you say soft hip hop. You talking about Ja Rule? <laughs> Damn, yeah, man. Man. <laughs> what would I do without my baby? Nah, I can nah, see ain't you no smoking to that. Nah, that's out. <laughs> Everything between me and you. <laughs> nah, you. Damn, uh, man, no me no slamming John ja Rule. Huh? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, right there. No man. Uh, let's ja talk about Rule, your man. endeavors as being a father. How involved you are with your children? Oh man, I'm super involved, man. Go, I, I go heard a rumor. Through. I heard a rumor. About what? That you, uh, you like to braid. Your child's hair? You, oh, you know man. how to braid hair? No, nah, I'm not good at braiding. Okay. You know, okay. I'll whip up a ponytail. In the a ponytail, oh, okay. Man, I'm sick Who's that. got long hair in here? We're going to see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I got no I, hair. 
So what are some what are the, some of those daily things that uh, Daddy needs to take care of that you know you, you can't fail at these things every day it has to happen for the babies. How old are they by the way? Uh, two and seven. Oh, they're baby girls. Oh yeah, they're baby girls, man. They have beautiful Charlie names. Charlie and Chase. They have beautiful names as well. Those Appreciate are dope names. That, so yeah, what are, what are some of those things that Daddy needs to get done? Um, and is this harder than training for the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, it wasn't, you know, I'm a, I come from a big family. Okay. I come from a big family, I got a lot of siblings. So, I mean, the fatherhood came in, you know, and my instincts kicked in. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about changing diapers, giving baths. Right. What um, is one thing you can't or won't do? That you do? don't like to do as a as, daddy? Um, at this age now, I don't give my kids baths. I okay. Mean, my, my, my seven-year-old, like, nah, you just out. Right? Yeah. You, you do your own thing. Okay. But, um, as a dad, it's nothing I won't do. Yeah. That's crazy, man. There's nothing I won't do. I love, I love my children. I yes. do anything for them. And um, I'm, I'm very active. I'm, I'm very involved. I'm, I mean, taking to school, picking up what activities. They, uh, yeah, what are the extracurricular activities they do? Are they dancing or are they tumbling? Or? Oh, man, nah, my uh, seven-year-old, man, she's so athletic. Oh, yeah? She's a stud, man. What's she's she going like, to do? What does she want to do? What is, what is she drawn to as far as the athletics are concerned? She likes track, man. She's in track right now, track season, but she loves football. Ooh. I'm trying to get, she loves football. I don't know what's wrong with her. She's like a little, <laughs> she's a been little trained, dude, man. Right? She's been trained by you. She sees her daddy doing it's it. It's a bloodline, for real, but she loves football. She wants to play tackle so bad. Oh I man, mean, she played flag for what two years, three years, like two years now. Already, man, she's running all over the place. Man, I gotta show you some of these videos. And but. so, what do you feel when you see your baby out there, you know, smashing on fools? Man, <laughs> I cry on the inside, man. I cry on the inside. <laughs> like that's my baby. But she wanted to be involved, so I, I mean, I don't, I don't let up on her, man. I'm tough on her a little bit. You know, yeah. I, man, man, get up, man. Go get him. You know, I'm out there, like you swear she was a boy. Speaking of being on tough on them, what are you gonna do when it comes to dating age when they start meeting boys? Why y'all do that to me, man? I'm sorry, man. They didn't Why say that me. that to me right now, <laughs> man. Uh, I mean, at some point, they're gonna bring a little boy friend yeah. home, oh, or man. you're gonna see him walk into the car to, as you pick her up with some guy, so some man. little boy. Like, who's that? That's my, my friend. I'd be a lie if I tell you I didn't think about that, man. Me and my boy, when I grew up with, one of my best friends, he have a, a kid same age, and we talk about stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, I watch the movies when you know, we got <laughs> people coming over for prom. Yeah, and the dads pull them around and put them in the garage. Yeah, and chats with them. Um, but me, I, I, I'm definitely gonna be involved in that. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I mean, I'm an athlete, man. I've been an athlete all my life. So, yeah, you know, I've, I've came across different types of incidents and women and all this other stuff. So. I definitely, I mean, even now, like I talk to her about boys and girls. Mm -hmm. and early on, you got to talk to them like early that. on. Yeah, and she's so smart, man. She 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 soaks it all in, and she deals with a lot of stuff at school and with girl talk and little drama. It's crazy, man. These kids. Yeah, what what, that, what what do they come home? What what's the latest thing? The little drama. I'm sure they're talking about Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, listen, I, I kid you not. This is probably one of the funniest things ever, and I had to like, I just turned around and walked away. I went to pick my little girl from school yesterday. Her and her friends had like a little breakdown. And they got into a little huddle and they was like, one, two, three. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, this is not, this is not. And I got, so I pick up my two year old, me and my seven year old walk to my two year old class, pick her up. And I hear her saying it. So I'm like, where oh, you bro. pick this up at? She said, okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, please. All right, so Nick V, can, can you show them how to do the, there's different occurs, okay? If you don't know, there's level, yeah. there's Man, levels to it. I'm not well curve, whatever that is. Okay, so Nick V can explain. So there's, evidently she's trademarking the occur thing that she stole from somebody else yeah. that somebody else stole from somebody else. Uh, okay, so it was stolen three times. Remember the original one was dra the drag queen. The drag queen, yeah, there's a drag queen drag that, queen, that started it and off And then the Kardashian stole drag it. Race. The Kardashian stole it and, and then, then she stole it from the Kardashians. Then she stole it from Kardashian, but now she is trademarking it and she's trading the two and three occurs yeah. and four, right? There's two R's. The occur were two R's See? and that's for the sweatshirts and uh, all the athletic gear right. that she's putting out and there's three R's. Occur. So it's different. <laughs> so I asked Nick the other day, what does the uh, occur with five R's sound like, and you said, "Occur." <laughs> I think so. Like a little pigeon. Right? <laughs> That's what uh, actually what Cardi said. It sounds like a, oh, yeah. a cold pigeon, a cold pigeon in New York. In New York. <laughs> yeah, well, right. So, uh, speaking of her situation, you know, being a stripper, an Ooh. ex stripper, mm -hmm. taking men to hotel rooms. You know, drugging them, stealing their money. You know, you're a famous guy. You got money. You're in the NFL. Women are always trying to yeah, do out. things. Yeah, that's out. You uh, know? Yeah, that's canceled. No, no, no. That's all the way out. <laughs> how, how do you sniff them occurs out? <laughs> 
Well, well fortunately, I have a girlfriend, so you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you locked in. You, you locked in. Locked I, in. I, I but previous to, the, in previous to the girlfriend, and I'm sure you might have heard, heard horror stories uh, from yeah, no, other not, man, players. No, plenty, and I do know guys that end up getting robbed, man. And it, it's ridiculous, but. It's their fault I, though, too, right? I mean, it's for sure they fault, man. <laughs> it's for sure they fault. Like I mean, they get you, caught up. You get caught up. You get you get drunk. You know what I'm saying? And you got all this jewelry. You got it all laid out. When I mean, you bring your girl, the girls, you just meet to your room. room. Man, like, come on, Bro. man. That's where you lay your head at. Papusa will make you do crazy things. I don't and know you if know you know this. I heard. <laughs> what's your, what's I heard, your, man. What's your favorite kind of uh, cuisine? Food? Do you cook? By the way, you know what I do cook. Okay, I, I do cook, man. I'm I'm, I'm not. Uh, Cordon, I'm not uh, Cordon Blue. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I get the job done for sure, man. My family's Jamaican, man, so uh, I, got, I, got, I got a little, you know, I got a little. I got a little what is me, the Sean Goldson signature dish? What do you make best? <sighs> what are you really good at making? See, that's crazy. You say that. I'm talented. I'm a man of many talents. Yeah, I see. I'm a simple man, but I'm a man of many talents. Do you have? Okay, well, go ahead. I want to hear this. Um. My baked chicken is pretty good. Baked man. chicken. My baked chicken is awesome, man. I do a lot. Um. What else I can do, man? My signature? That's hard, because I'm all over the place. Yeah. The, the, the dish you're just most proud of, like, I present this to you. <laughs> the shines. Like if Cardi B was coming to dinner at your house, bringing her cold pigeons from New York City, <laughs> what would you prepare for, for Cardi <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe some baked pigeon and rice. <laughs> I like that. How about some jerk pigeon? <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you, can you can you uh, pull up a, a Jamaican accent on on cue from your you know because you grew up with? Are you want for sir? Oh, say it again, man. <laughs> I would, well, you want me for sure. You know, ah! <laughs> I, I like it. Well, you played for a lot of teams. You have four teams mm -hmm. in, in your career, your mm -hmm. NFL career. You played for San Francisco, obviously. Right. You played for the Bucks, Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. You played for Washington, D.C., the Redskins. And also you played for the Atlanta Falcons. Man, you did your homework. What else is left? Hey, man, I'm, I'm a football fan, so I know. You know what I mean? I feel you now. Um, I respect that. No. What was your favorite team or favorite city? Um, of course, San Francisco, man. Yeah. San Francisco was always... Uh, Y'all had oh, a special defense. Part of my heart, that man. defense oh, y'all yeah, had man. that year. Not even a defense, man. We bro. had a team. Man. No, I, a yo, for team, sure. Bro. But that defense, though, right? That scared people. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? For yeah. real. For for real. For real. No, for real. We set the tone, man. Every game. That was our mindset going in every week. Was you know, uh, me and Dante Whitner, man. That was one of my dudes. Oh, Hitner. Dante Hitner. Yeah, man. We we was always, you know, hey, we gotta knock him over out this week. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because that 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 eliminates. Huh. That shortens the whole game. Yeah. Like when you take one of those guys out on offense, when they receive the best receiver, oh, they don't want to run. So, so your plan is to mentally take them out of the game by hitting the hell out of them. Yeah. No, I won't say that. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I don't want to get you in trouble. But, yeah. You know, that you got to you make your, your, your presence felt. Do you stay in touch with any of those guys at all? Yeah. A lot of them, man. Dante's still cool. Terrell Brown, my good friend, man. We're going to vacation and stuff together. Me, Braille, Navarro. Mm hmm. Um, Takeo Spikes. Takeo Spikes, yeah. Yeah, man. Man, the key wide neck spikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bro, no, this guy's no. neck <laughs> is huge. <laughs> Tequila Spike's neck is he's like that guy from Wide Neck from uh yeah, Will Star Hip Hop. Oh, <laughs> oh. Hey, this right or no? No, that's true. That's dead on though. That's dead on. Oh man. And Atlanta, man. I like Atlanta a lot too. I mean okay. that team, just being around the team and what they stand for and what yeah. you know, the, the, the program, yeah, the organization itself, man. It was pretty cool. Definitely. Oh man! I got a question, and this, this might be tough. I mean, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. But um, the whole um, take a knee thing—you know, where do you stand on that? And you know, if I'm sure there's a lot of conversations, but you know, uh, from outside looking in, just a question. Well, you're a player that's in it. Yeah. You know, you you've been there, you've seen it, you've seen what's happening with uh, the inequalities and things like that. What is your feeling about that whole situation? And to be honest, when I played, man, I never really like, even, even like paid attention to the national anthem. But mm -hmm. like, it was yeah. always, like, but when all of this started happening, it's like, what, what was your thought? It was like, oh my god, are we, are we going to go through this, or can we just play? Or that was my mindset. I was playing, like, man, let's let's, let's go get the, get the game, cracking. get the game going. Yeah, man, yeah. I, I never really got into all of that. You don't want to get into the politics. You're just like, hey, let's play the game. Right. Let's get out there and yeah, do our let's, business, let's do, do our this, job. Uh, speaking of that, uh, the whole situation. Let's talk about the. I would say preferential treatment, but the different treatment for owners as opposed to players. The whole Robert Kraft situation. 
in in New England, caught in the the sex spa or the spa, getting I got the, swept on the rug quick. It, it, <laughs> well, I mean, it's still going on. But if that was a player, oh, man, how different him. would the repercussions be? Oh, be You've been, been fired. Maybe you've been one blackballed. Be exactly, <laughs> fired extra, and then he, all over every social media, every you know. Television show, sports network, whatever the case yeah. is, man. I, to be honest with you, I haven't seen it lately. Yeah. I haven't seen it lately. They hushed it up real is, quick. Is, yeah. So, yeah, man. So, definitely. Oh. Go ahead, Nick B. You got something? I think I do. All right. Hold on. Oh, you, oh, it's that time? I think so. All right. All right. So, you hear this music right here in the background? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> All right. It is time for a, a, a bit we call Mouth Love. You ever heard of Mouth Love? <laughs> so mouth love is positive affirmations for your day and nick v is our teacher we walked into a positive cult uh, if you will a cult of positivity no kool-aid or no uh no cloaks or anything in here though but we want you to follow along and be a part of this we've had people like ice cube be a part of mouth love he's done it ice cube you know him he's the og yeah yeah for At sure. exhibit you know everybody who's been coming through we had uh Sawiti from the bay she did it so we want you to be a part of it you want you you down to get down with us yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know what I'm getting into. <laughs> are, you, but... are you okay with this? Okay. okay. <laughs> <Can I go? laughs> All right, it's time for mouth love. Okay. Nick V is our teacher. Okay, here it is. Everybody, take a deep breath in, please. Icy eyes. Everybody in the room, push it out. We need that prana in our life one more time. Do you feel how good that feels? It's a beautiful thing. So the Sean awesome. basically is what I write here is a positive affirmation so everybody could take with them as like a shield throughout their day. Positivity. So no matter what happens, when you leave this room, you're always going to have these things with you. As long as you repeat after me, this is this is your shield of love. Yeah, if you don't repeat, there's not going to be a shield. <laughs> and just the, you know. might get hit by a car outside. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Right. You want to repeat about this. You know what I mean? Make, all right, repeat after me. I care for myself. I care, I care for, for myself. myself. I love who I am. I I love who I am. I am enough. I am, I am enough. enough. I am perfect. I, I am perfect. perfect. You are now in mouth love. So. There it is. The <laughs> Sean Gold. in my life, man. <laughs> yeah, man. You feel feel, feel more protected now, I do, right? For sure. Yeah. Uh, how can people follow you? Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. What do you got? You can follow me on Instagram at Hawk underscore Inc. That's Hawk H A W K underscore I N C and Twitter the Hawk thirty eight. All right, man. Well, congratulations on everything you've done, everything you've achieved. Obviously, being in the NFL is a huge feat itself. You know, right. I mean, not a lot of people make it to the NFL. True that. A lot of players don't make it. And congratulations on man, the cigar time. Uh, Thanks. Uh, the daddy life and all mm -hmm. that. You're going to have to update us when the little boys come to the house. Okay. Come back and... <laughs> <laughs> let us, yeah, I'll show you the bones. Yeah, let, us, <laughs> let us know how you dealt with the situation. <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? And uh, you're more than welcome to come back anytime, bro. Yeah. You have any, oh, man, any future sure. products, projects or anything. You know, you're more than welcome. So, open door. Appreciate it. Appreciate y'all having me, man. Oh, yeah, Sean Golson, the Sean Golson, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Baker Boys Show. Radio, how it's supposed to be heard. It's the Baker Boys Show. What's going on? This is Drippin' Every day. Oh.